Cells in your body are continually replacing themselves. The cells that you've got in your body now are not the cells you're going to have that you had in your body five or ten years ago. So how does your body know to keep you a human and not turn you into a plant or a fish or a bird? It all comes down to DNA replication. DNA making exact copies of itself. And that's what this video is about. But before we go into the steps of DNA replication, I want to tell you a few important things to keep in mind when you're thinking about DNA replication and when you're answering questions about it. So let's have a look here. Remember in grade uh, 10, I think it was, yes, you learned about mit mitosis. And in mitosis, it formed, mitosis formed part of the cell cycle. And you can see here, you've got mitosis over there, and then you have the cell cycle um, continuing with interphase. Now interphase is the stage that um, this whole process takes place. So it, first of all, you must remember that it occurs in mitosis and in meiosis. Maybe you haven't learned about meiosis yet, but when you do, just keep that in mind. And then it occurs in the interphase. That's the part of the cell cycle that it takes place before cell division. One double-stranded DNA molecule will form two identical DNA molecules. It's very important that an exact copy is made. And then you want the chromosome number to stay the same. So now you remember in mitosis that you learned about, one parent cell becomes two daughter cells after mitosis. But you want the chromosome number to stay the same because, say for example, in humans we have 46 chromosomes, you want the daughter cells also to have 46 chromosomes. So how does that happen? It's here in the interphase that DNA makes a copy. So it doubles and then you have enough chromosome, um, chromosome material and DNA, to, when, it, when the cells divide, that each cell will have 46 chromosomes. Now we're going to look at the seven steps that I have for DNA replication and they are the essential things that you have to mention if you have to discuss the steps in DNA replication. Even though this process only takes a few seconds, it's important that we name all the different steps in the correct order. It's really important because it's a process and one thing is leading to the other, it's important that you keep the steps correct. Now I'm going to show you with my hands and I want, they are like your um, legal crib notes that you can take into the exam. We can't take papers and cell phones, but we can take our hands. So I'm going to show you a way using your hands, how you can remember the steps very, very easily. And you can practice this. You can watch the video again and practice it when you're studying using your hands. And that will help you when you're sitting in an exam to answer and you just remember what you did with your hands. Okay. So the first, the first thing is that you've got this this DNA double helix and it's all wound up but the first thing that it has to do is it has to unwind because remember DNA is actually a ladder so you wanted to get it to look like the ladder so step one the DNA double helix you must say that double helix unwinds and then what happens is now you've got your nucleotides think of my fingers as the nucleotides the hydrogen bonds break and now it unzips. So step one is it unwinds, the double helix unwinds, the hydrogen bonds break and it unzips. Now each strand, as it unzips, each strand forms a template for the new complementary strands to form. Here's a template, here's a template. Think of my, as, as, as it is if I'm sitting in beside the nucleus and there are free nucleotides all over around me. And those free nucleotides come to the strand. And if this is adenine, then thymine will attach. If this is guanine, then cytosine will attach. And on this side, if this is thymine, adenine will attach. And if this is um, cytosine, then guanine will attach. And what happens is that this, these free nucleotides attach and then... If you look at number five, complementary base pairing occurs. And you have to mention adenine with thymine. Give, any, give a couple of examples. Guanine with cytosine. 
and rather write out the word if that's the first time you're mentioning it in a question. Don't just write A, T and G, C, but write out the whole word. What happens now, you've got the, the, the complementary base pairing has occurred and you've got a strand on this side and a strand on that side. And they are identical to each other, but they're also identical to the original one that we had in the beginning. So at number six, we can say two identical DNA um, molecules are formed and they're DNA molecules. So you can say that. And each one has an original and one new strand. An original and one new strand. Then look at number seven. Each strand now forms a new helix. Let's go through those steps. I'm going to go through them now with you. And, and I want you to, you can even try it with your, with your own hands. DNA double helix unwinds. The hydrogen bonds break and the strand unzips. Now you have two single strands and each strand has, a, is, has formed a template. The free nucleotides attached to the, um, each strand. Adenine um, attaches to thymine, guanine to cytosine, and we call that complementary base pairing. And we have two identical DNA molecules on, um, that are formed, and they um, they're each wound up and form a helix. And that is DNA replication. I've got one more slide to show you where I want to show you a diagram because you might get given a diagram and then you have to comment on it or say what is happening. So let's look at the diagram. If you look at number one, that is what is happening when um, the, the double helix unwinds. Then at number two, the hydrogen bonds are breaking and it's unzipping. Number three, if you look over there, you see there's a template that is formed. And number four and five, that is where the um, nucleotides are attaching to the template, each one attaching adenine with thymine, cytosine with guanine, and you've got um, the complementary base pairing occurring. And then right at the bottom, the number six and number seven, you've got two identical, please say that word identical when you're answering questions, identical mole DNA molecules, and they form a double helix. Just one warning before I go. A lot of people confuse DNA replication with transcription and translation. Those two processes form some, a part of protein synthesis. At a later stage, I'm going to post a video on DNA transcription, and then you will be able to compare the two. But learn this well, then you won't get it confused with the other two processes. All right.